Hello everyone, welcome to Real Science Challenge. I'm Kent Louie, science teacher and talking head, broadcasting from beautiful Vancouver, Canada. And today, I'm gonna to be on my computer, showing you an activity I've done to teach STEAM. That's science, tech, engineering, art and math, using a free and simple online application called Teachable Machine. Now, I did this assignment with my grade eight students recently, and they had fun learning about characteristics of living things for science, about artificial intelligence for tech and engineering, and percentages for math and for art, experimenting with modifying images to try to fool artificial intelligence. But before I get into all that, handouts for this episode could be found or can be found at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP43. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now first, a bit of context. This STEAM assignment was part of a lesson I was teaching on the characteristics of living things. That is how all living things use energy, reproduce, grow, produce waste, and respond to their environment. And I wondered, could an artificially intelligent program or machine be considered living if it could respond to its environment, reproduce, etc.? That's when I found Teachable Machine. Now let me show you how it works on my computer. You want to go online, do a search for Teachable Machine, head to the website, and click on the Get Started button. And then select the Image Project and Standard Image Model. Now for my students' assignment, I wanted them to each choose an animal from a list that I gave them and teach their machine to think like that animal. That meant that their machine should be able to identify whether an image would be that of a predator a prey or neither for their chosen animal. So for example, I'm gonna teach my machine to think like a raccoon. Now this is what my project looks like, my project file looks like at the start of my assignment. Notice there are two folders on the left titled class one and class two with the option of making more. There's this train model button that's in gray and there's also a preview section as well. Now this over here is what my project file looks like after I've started my assignment. First thing I did was change the class names to Predator Prey from class one and class two. These uh, folders also contain images that I uploaded of Predator and Prey. So for example, wolves, foxes, owls, bobcats. These are all examples of predator animals that eat raccoons. And for prey, I've uploaded like eggs, uh, crayfish, mice, fruits and vegetables, um, et cetera, et cetera. Now let's hit the train model button. And this part is gonna take a couple of minutes, depending on how many images I've uploaded to the folders. And this, pro this process, excuse me, will teach the machine to identify any future images I present as either predator or prey, based on what has been placed into the folders. As you can see, it's been done and there's a preview section, and on the bottom, the output, it, it suspects that my face is 100% prey. It makes sense, because my face probably looks like a big egg to the machine, and so therefore, it's probably like a big egg that a raccoon can munch on. Uh, this feature can also be turned off, in the sense that I could turn off the webcam, and now I have the ability to upload uh, files of my choosing. So right now, let's try uploading a file. I'm going to upload a, uh, a picture of a bear and see what the machine says. And hey, according to the machine, a bear is 100% likely to be a predator for a raccoon. So pretty good. Uh, let's try another one. Okay, I'm going to upload a picture of a hawk. Remember, uh, owls hunt raccoons. So let's see what a hawk is to a raccoon. And according to this, it's a 96% likely that a hawk is a prey animal that a raccoon would eat and a 4% chance it's a predator. So obviously this is wrong. Um, but, uh, and it makes sense because I think the machine is obviously looking at the body of the hawk, thinking that the body looks like an egg as well. Uh, this is interesting because it's an example of how a machine will look at one thing and not another. And so perhaps we need to upload more images to help prevent this from happening in the future. Images of hawks and other birds of prey that hunt raccoons. Now, what if I uploaded a picture of a shrub or a bush? Now, I've done this before, and the machine actually thinks the shrub is prey. 
But we know that a shrub is neither a predator or prey for raccoons. So one thing I have students do is create a third folder called neutral, which would be organisms or non-living things that a raccoon would encounter in their environment that would be neither predator or prey. And after all this is done, I get students to download a copy of their work as a file. And yes, you can do this. And email me that file so I can assess and test their programs. I also get students to modify images of predator and prey animals and give these to the machine to see what the machine would say and to see what minimum modifications would be needed to turn a prey image into a predator or vice versa. You can also black out an image and gradually reveal to see what minimum information, once again, would be needed for the machine to correctly classify something as predator or prey. Now, other things you can discuss is things like bias. This activity lends itself very well to that discussion on bias and machine learning because the bias that's present in things like facial recognition and AI is based on the data that we, as programmers, programmers excuse me, feed the machine. And so, and so therefore, our bias ends up being the machine's bias. That's a lot. And that's it for this episode. Please smash the like or subscribe button below or leave a comment. And handouts, once again, are available at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP43. Thanks for watching, and let's talk science again soon.